Hi, my name is Wen Zhe. Have you ever struggled with generating innovative research ideas? Today, I'm excited to share with you my research on the practical applications of near-infrared nanophosphorus in various fields, including my thought process, methodology, and the results. Phosphors are ubiquitous in many modern electronic devices, including mobile phone panels. By using blue light chips to stimulate red and green phosphors, we can achieve the desired color. Designing a phosphor formula is like playing a strategic game much like Go. For those interested in learning more about the basics of phosphors, our recent article published in Science Monthly is a great resource. In this study, I used chromium as an activator, enabling the phosphor to be excited by ultraviolet visible light and emit light in the near-infrared region. In order to meet the trend of miniaturization in modern electronic devices, the synthetic process of phosphor is typically carried out at high temperatures, resulting in a rough and large-sized product. However, I was able to produce nanophosphorus by loading the phosphor precursor solution into the pores of mesoporosilica nanoparticle and sintering it at high temperatures. The nanophosphorus are spherical and around 100 nanometers. By analyzing the specific surface area of nitrogen adsorption and desorption, we can confirm that our phosphor is successfully loaded in the pores of the mesoporosilica nanoparticles. These nanophosphors can be packaged on mini LED blue light chips, and their near infrared light can be used as a sensor for various applications, such as vein imaging, oximeter, or material analysis. With the aid of artificial intelligence or big data, it may even be possible to achieve preliminary cancer diagnosis. The application of blood oxygen detection is to convert it the change of the absorbance of near infrared light in the oxygenate hemoglobin and hemoglobin. Material analysis is based on the fact that different functional groups absorb in the near-infrared region, which leads to the change in the reflect signal. In the latter case, my nanophosphor serves as a light harvesting fertilizer, absorbing the light that chlorophyll does not and converting it into near-infrared light. This energy is just enough to make the photosynthesis center absorb and accelerate the progress of photosynthesis. The last case is a tracer applied to biological images. Because visible light is easily absorbed by biological tissues, where near-infrared light is less likely to be absorbed. We can see where the substance we are carrying is transported through our nanophosphor, whether it accumulates at the exact location of the tumor and releases the drug. In summary, the first step is to diligently cultivate a solid understanding of the research background to facilitate more efficient cross-field collaboration. If you are interested in learning more about my work, you can visit my Google Scholar or ORCID ID profiles to download papers. Thanks for your listening.